Thank you very much. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about an approach for how to do enterprise software engineering that allows the company to focus more on actually building digital experiences, not on building platforms and operating platforms. Right? Uh, just to give a little bit of background, I'm the founder and CEO of the company. I also head products. I come from a technology background. I'm a computer scientist by training. I worked in IBM Research before starting WSO2. Uh, that was 18 years ago. We have about 700 customers in 90 different countries. We operate globally. Uh, we are, uh, the company is based originally out of Sri Lanka. I myself live in Sri Lanka, but we are technically a US company with presence in uh, 10 different countries physically and uh, customers in 90 countries. All right. So I'm not telling anything new when I tell you that everybody, every business has to have a digital operation. Everybody has something digital. But the important aspect that a lot of people sometimes don't focus on is the fact that you can't compete with your digital experience with customers unless you create something unique for yourself. So every company in some form or the other, whether they deliver an experience for their customers as a mobile app or as a web application or some other kiosk or some digital experience through that, or the competitiveness they build for themselves, for their employees by having better internal applications, internal integrations, internal experiences, those are the things that define how company A, let's say it's an insurance company, versus another insurance company can compete and differentiate. So that digital experience that you create is what fundamentally defines the difference, gives you a real competitive advantage. So that creating that experience means every company has to create some software on their own. They have to become a software company to some extent. And that's an easy statement to make, but it's not that easy to become a software company. This is a great article, actually, by McKinsey that came out in December 2022. And in this article, they identify a, a six uh, characteristics that you have to do in order to become a software company. In this line, every company is a software company, is very widely used now. Microsoft uh, echoes it. All, all major business, all technology companies say, this is what you need to become. So let's look at what does it take. So first is committing to a software culture. So what that means is the software culture is driven not by the CEO or the head of the organization deciding what needs to be built. Software culture is about empowering people to think and create, uh, allowing failure, recognizing and, and accepting and, and supporting uh, continuous iteration, all of those kind of things. So there's a lot of things that you need to have in the business in order to facilitate a software culture. Uh, the second very important bullet is you have to invest in product managers who are empowered to actually make the business. So product manager means not just technical product management, but going almost all the way to having a PNL for the digital capability of the product. So if it is a web application for a bank, if it is a mobile application for some other, uh, uh, let's say, a delivery company, the quality of the experience their customers have through that app must be owned by the product manager, and they must be empowered to actually make decisions to evolve and to create more capabilities through that. Otherwise, you have this, again, top-down management that won't work. Uh, third bullet is really important because it's really about how you create software. Since so you have to drive engineering excellence. Engineering excellence means the ability to create products that are better than what your competitor can create, experiences that are better than somebody else's create. And, and you do that through having autonomous teams and an architecture that supports that, a flexible technology architecture underneath that allows the company to go underneath and create better and better experiences. Um, ecosystem, the, the fourth point is learn how to play in the ecosystem game. What that is really about is saying, in order to be a software company today, you don't build everything. There was a time when software companies or companies would build everything. If you look at Uber as an example, Uber doesn't do payment, doesn't do maps, and, and, uh, uh, but they aggregate everything and give an experience that is so awesome that millions and millions of customers love it and use it globally. Right? So, so building that ecosystem architecture, learning how to play in the ecosystem where you consume external third-party capabilities as well as internal capabilities from other parts of, parts of the organization are really, really important. In fact, the internal consumption is a lot more difficult to achieve than external consumption. Because internal consumption comes with politics, comes with uh, territorial mindset, comes with people saying, well, it's my thing, I don't want you to use it. 
because there's more liability if somebody else is using it and so on. Right? But creating that ecosystem game, both for internal and external, is absolutely critically important. The next point is, hey, if you have a software capability, you must also have a go-to-market capability to support that. And this is critical. If you, if, you, if you build this great digital experience, you have to have a way to go to market with that digital experience. You don't only go to market with the physical experience that you've always had, but also the digital experience. And the last point is probably the most important. In the end, software doesn't create itself. There are human being engineers who have to create this software. So for, for a, a company to be able to create awesome products, they must have awesome engineers who are empowered who are operating in a flexible environment, who are given the right e experiences, who are given the right tools and the right work environment, and they understand why they're doing it. The purpose, the mission of the organization must come into the heart and soul of the developers. And getting that is really, really difficult, and that's a critical component of pulling that off. Right? So this is, a, this is a paper by McKinsey that identifies these six characteristics as important to get how you become a software company. So I'm going to focus on, on three parts which are technical and uh, focusing on technical enablement and, and so forth and then talk about how you get those done. The other three are more business oriented. They come from management, they come from the board, so it's beyond what technology can do. But these three can be solved by technology to a great extent. So if you step back from all of that and ask what does this mean? So what this is explaining is that what a business wants to have is a model where your customers, and by customers I also mean employees and partners and so on, right? Because employees are also customers internally. Their ability to offer digital experiences are very important. Are, are able to consume awesome digital experience that are owned by a business product manager. Somebody who understands the customer, understands the business, can put it together to give those experiences. And underneath, there is a capacity to architect, develop, and deliver software. Right? And, and to do that, you need to have an underlying enterprise marketplace that has all the capabilities that you're reusing, both from inside the company and from outside the company. And of course, that part is done by developers. So this is what you want to end up with on, as, as an organization, so that you can create digital experiences and deliver them properly. But unfortunately, often what you end up with is within the business, you have a lot of technology topics. So everybody's focusing on, okay, we need to do this kind of technology. We have to go to Kubernetes. We have to go to containers. We have to do serverless. We have to do multi-cloud. We need API management. We need all these different things that you have to do in order to be able to do those things. And, and then that's on the sort of the physical, digital technology infrastructure enablement. Then when you look at the application architecture, you'll have a, a API uh, first development, you need to set up reuse architecture, domain driven design, all of these different aspects that have to be done in order to make, make things actually work in a technical way. Right? And all of this takes a lot of time and effort. And also on top of this, enterprises will introduce some kind of a software development lifecycle platform so that you can integrate everything and get it all together. Right? And all of this is really about, not about the digital experience. Now if you notice, I didn't talk a single thing about what the customer experiences. Customer doesn't see any of this go. This is all underneath, right? This is hidden, this is what we have to do in order to give something for the customer. So the, the, the company wants to see, the business wants to see this kind of experience, but you get is a whole lot of things underneath. So let me, let me take a, uh, uh, so, so wh wh what that means is, uh, e sorry, my two pictures are in two different, um, sorry. Uh, I wanted to say here for a second. The, wh what this shows is the technical team in a company is spending most of their time on actually creating the platform so that they can build the digital experiences, not on building the applications, not the digital experiences, but on the platform. And that's the wrong way to be thinking about it. That's not the way it should be operated. The, the, the technical team should also be focused on creating digital experiences. Because if I'm an insurance company, if I'm a bank, if I'm a retail company, if I'm a healthcare company, why am I worrying about managing a Kubernetes cluster? Why am I worrying about geo load balancing? These things are things that should be done by one level lower. They're critically important. It should work. And it should be able to let you get on with it. Right? Let me take an analogy. Uh, uh, if you're old enough, you remember the days when email was, uh, was a painful thing. If you wanted to get email, you had to set up an email server, you had to set up an anti-spam system, you had to have antivirus, you had to have uh, backup systems for that, all these kind of things. 
And then that's just email. And if you want to have a chat system, maybe you go and buy another chat server. If you want to have calendaring, you have another calendar server. And then there was something called iCal that worked, or CalDAV. And there were all these little tools that you had to put together in order to facilitate your company's employees to communicate and collaborate with each other. Right? If you just go back 10, 15 years, this was the only way you could do it. Then came Google Workplace and Office 365. Right? With those two, you don't spend any of that stuff. You take the time to set it up, and even set up is almost fully automated, a non-technical person can set it up. And you add the users, and there's identity management, all that is integrated into that. And then you don't spend any time operating. In the old world, you had to do software updates, there would be virus updates, there would be spam rule updates, there would be the, you know, the permission updates. When a new employee joins, you have to enable to this system, this system, this system, continuously manage and operate all of that infrastructure. And yes, and then, then you actually use it, but uh, not easily, because now you have different applications. For chat, you have another application. For documents, you have another application. In fact, there were no shared documents, none of those things. But when you come to a collaboration platform, if you are starting a company today or if you're operating a company today, it makes no sense to not use a platform, either Google Workplace Suite or Microsoft Office 365 or something similar. Because the focus is not on, as a company, nobody is interested in worrying about how do I set up and operate this nonsense. It's critical nonsense. So it is not nonsense at all. It is what allows you to operate the company. But instead of focusing on setting up and operating, now you debate about, OK, how do we have etiquette? How do we share? What are the policies for how you collaborate? How do you do knowledge management? Those kind of things, right? So you've gone from setting up and operating collaboration infrastructure to just collaborating. So in a company today, you don't spend time worrying about this stuff. You just sign up and you collaborate. Right? Now, in the software world, that's what we want to get to. The company just signs up and they write code. They don't need to worry about all the other underlying things of updating this, updating that, getting more capacity. In, in Gmail or in Office 365, when's the last time you, you worried about my mail is going to get deleted? Right? Yes, you have a quota. If the quota is not big enough, they just pay a little bit more money. It costs money, but it just works. You don't think twice about it. It just works. Right? That's what we want to get to for the software engineering part of the business so that you can create awesome digital experiences. So how do we get here? So there is a new term that's been in the, in the market for a few years now called platform engineering. Platform engineering is about this concept of creating platforms so that enterprises can focus on, on the layers above. So the platform engineering, so the general model, uh, according to these guys, is you have a separate team called the platform engineering team that creates the platform so businesses can create experiences on top of that. Right? And the platform engineering team plays an important role. So we have a lot of experience in this. Uh, we have been, so WC is a company that sells API management, identity access management, and integration technology. We have a lot of customers all over the world, and we've helped very large scale companies build internal platforms for many, many years. Right? I, I think we've had about 2,000 customers over the history of the company, and we've experienced with many of these actually building large scale platforms. What our experience has been is building a platform by yourself is a lot of work and takes a lot of time. And, and it's a significant effort that people put in. And in fact, a lot of the money that you spend on digital transformation goes into building a platform, which is not delivering any digital value to the business at all. It's critically necessary infrastructure, but not the value itself. And platform engineering that delivers just a DevOps platform, so you have this software development lifecycle, isn't enough. That's important, no question. You need to be able to build and deliver and operate software. But you also have to be able to uh, the reuse that, that the six statements that we had earlier, where there was proper engineering discipline, this marketplace concept of having an uh, ecosystem, keeping developers happy, giving them the platform to operate creatively. Those are very, very important as well. Right? So we call this concept uh, the, the, the experience that you need to deliver, platformless enterprise software engineering. And what that is is, of course, powered by platform engineering. Platform engineering is what puts the underlying stuff together. But in order to support that reuse architecture, that marketplace, that collaboration, that flexible architecture, the developer experience, you need to make sure that the modern atoms and molecules and the composition architecture of enterprise architecture is in the platform itself. So that is 
you shouldn't have to buy a platform and then go and decide, okay, should I buy WS2, should I buy Apigee, should I buy Tyke, should I buy Kong for API management? Because API management doesn't add any value to the business. API management is important, but it's not value that you deliver from API management. You va get value from creating beautiful APIs that give value that other people can consume. So API management is important and should be there, but not something that you need to focus on. Similarly, if you look at the using uh, Kubernetes and the cloud infrastructure properly, you need to have service mesh kind of infrastructure. You need to have zero trust deployment. You need to have a, uh, some kind of scaling management, so something like cell-based architecture. You need to support domain-driven design. You need to be able to have this concept of two pizza teams kind of thing where you have al ability to isolate and give people a room to operate. All of these things have to be set up. And if you, if you just have a DevOps pipeline that lets you go from here to there, that's important, but it doesn't deliver those things. Then you need, you're leaving that up to the different application teams to do it by themselves, which is not a very productive way of uh, spending time if you are an insurance company, if you're a healthcare company, if you're a retail company. Right? It's not the focus of technology. If the focus of technology is to deliver that something that people love. And the developer experience is almost as important or probably more important than everything else because if the developer doesn't enjoy that experience, if they can't put their 95% of their time and energy and heart and soul into actually creating software, not on dealing with administrative process, on getting approvals, waiting for things, you know, finding that uh, can't debug, can't find the logs, that's very, very wasteful. And they would rather work in, a, in an environment that lets them do that. So, you know, developers are, are a critical critical, critical component of digital experience, obviously. So the best developers want to work in environments that let them develop, not make them play politics with either organizational structure or politics with your DevOps team or politics with your system. It's not worth it, right? If you are a brilliant developer, you just want to write code. And that should be supported. And so developer experience very much. So when you put all this together with an underlying platform, the platform engineering concepts, and you deliver this together, that delivers a concept of platformless software engineering. So there is a platform, you just don't see it and feel it. You know, when you use Google Office, Google Workplace, uh, Workplace or Office 365, there is an email server, there's an antivirus thing, there's an anti-spam, there's a load balancer, all this stuff is there. You just don't deal with it, right? You, when you use Google Docs, there's a shared drive, all that stuff is there. The platform goes from your focus into the ether. So you have a platform-less experience, and that's what you need to deliver and operate. When you have that, you just add developers. Just like in a collaboration setting, when you have a collaboration infrastructure in place, you simply add the collaboration, you have the tools, and you just collaborate. Here, you just have this experience, you just add developers, and everything else gets taken care of. So basically, from the time the, the developer writes code with their fingertips on a keyboard of some kind, pushes it into a code repository, from that time to the customer touching that code through some kind of a digital experience through their fingertips, probably usually thumbs, through another place, that gap should be something that developers don't focus on. And every company shouldn't reinvent how to do that. It's a waste of time. Right? We, are, we are past that stage now. Software should be at the level of collaboration, where you just focus on, hey, how do I get beautiful stuff put here so these guys have a beautiful experience on the other end? <coughs> so how do you get there? How do you build a platformless experience? So you don't, have to, uh, you don't have to buy it, you can build it. There are both options, as usual, with any kind of technology. So if you build it, there are frameworks. There's a very good open source framework called Backstage, which is an open source platform for building platforms. Uh, and you can take that and you can wire up a bunch of components together. Backstage doesn't cover the runtime architecture, the having an API marketplace, a developer portal. All these things are not covered in Backstage, so you do need to put that together. But you can, there are, there are various bits you can put together. And then you end up with a, uh, with a experience, with a platformless experience. Uh, you, if you don't want to use something like Backstage, you can go one step lower and use core technology, like I want to buy an IAM product, I need to buy an API management product, I need to wire it all up together. Right? And that's also possible, and it's completely fine. Uh, it's a question of how much control and how much of uh, 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 sort of religion you want to bring to it. Because there are some companies who say, well, you know, we know the best way to do CI. It is this, this, this. We know the best way to do continuous deployment. We know the best way for observability. We know the best way to pick up logs. If you want to do that, that's fine. But then you have a platform engineering team that puts it all together and delivers this experience so people can simply start writing code. 
But the other option is to buy a SaaS offering. Because uh, just like with other things like Google Office, uh, Google and Microsoft uh, for email and collaboration, there was a time when people would say, I'm not moving my email infrastructure out of the company. But now, so many, we've kind of gotten over that aspect. We accept that it's much, much easier not to have to think about it, just simply use it. So SaaS plays that capability. And, and there are a variety of SaaS offerings. We ourselves have one called Corio, and you can just sign up and use it. And there are uh, other providers also that, that offer hosted infrastructure. There's a hosted back, uh, backstage provider. Red Hat has a great product, a company called Harness, a company called Humanitech. There's a bunch of companies who are playing in this space. It's called uh, internal developer platforms, or internal developer portals is the popular name for it. And you can, you can search and find all kinds of products that, uh, that do this. Right? So um, uh, to summarize, uh, the customer doesn't care about the technology you use to give them the experience. The customer doesn't know whether you're running on Kubernetes, whether you're running on Microsoft Azure, whether you're running on AWS. Customer doesn't know whether you have a computer under your desk that's serving their request. The customer simply has an experience they touch and they feel. Right? That is the part that matters. It's not all the other stuff that you're wiring together. You know, if you go behind this, behind this screen, there's a whole lot of technology behind, and there's a whole lot of technology in front of me to make this system work. Right? You don't care about that. It's not relevant to you. What you care about is hearing what I'm saying and seeing the slides, and hopefully I'm saying something that's relevant to you. Otherwise, hopefully you wouldn't be here. That's what you care about. Right? You don't care about all the stuff underneath this platform that I'm standing on to make this work. That focus is what you really need to focus on as every enterprise, because everything else is just a waste of time. So, and the other thing, something to really keep in mind is delivering that infrastructure requires world-class skill set. Now, here we are in Qatar with this event, and, and this environment here is a world-class environment to make this speech work. It's not second class, it's the best in the world, basically. Right? Every company on the internet has to be operating like that, because if you don't, you're going to get hacked. So if you're doing anything digital, you have to be world-class. There is no second-class option. So you need to have a skill set and the underlying capability to deliver that. Right? And, and then the... the and really, the, the point is, by going to this platformless kind of thinking, platformless platform, you're now forcing your internal team to be more accountable, more focused on the business, and less on tinkering with all kinds of cool stuff. Right? As a technical guy, I'm a technical guy. I love tinkering with all kinds of cool stuff. But I can't justify, if I'm working in a bank, tinkering with how to scale up a Kubernetes cluster. It is not sensible anymore. There was a time when it was the first first thing to do, and you have to do that, but it's not sensible anymore. So that's what I'm hoping that everybody will understand from this presentation. The, the idea is keep the focus on the right place and deliver value to your customers. Don't do the wrong part and waste your time. Thank you very much.